Welcome, and thank you for downloading The 8 Biggest Problems, brought to you by Cadence Management Corporation. For over 25 years, Cadence has been helping organizations around the world to make a difference through project management success. Today, Cadence is widely recognized as a leading provider of project management training, consulting services, and supporting tools. Join Cadence President John Patton as interviewed by colleague Scott Allison in this episode of The 8 Biggest Problems. And so, John, previously in the series, we have provided seven of the biggest problems and their solutions. And they are, number one, people are not working on the project and their management doesn't know it. Number two, inadequate scope definition. And number three, the project starts slowly. Number four, people don't know how to plan a project. Number five, inability to get team members. Number six, responsibility at the task level is unclear. And number seven, changes to cost, schedule, and performance are not controlled. And this brings us to the conclusion of our series. So could you give me problem number eight? Well, Scott, before I state problem number eight, I'd like to let people who are listening know who might be project managers that I'm going to be criticizing project managers. Please don't take my comments personally if you're listening. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about all the project managers who had the opportunity to listen to this series and decided not to. Problem number eight is that project managers are passive. Now let me qualify problem number eight. It's higher on the list. In some companies, it's problem number one. I've saved it to problem number eight, however, because I want to underscore its importance. John, this seems like a contradiction in terms. How could you say that project managers are passive? Well, it's reality, Scott. And there are a number of causes. Uh, one that, that is quite visible uh, comes up in conversations between managers and project managers and consultants when we go in. And that is the confusion between coordination and leadership. A manager will say, pull this project together, coordinate it. A person will even be given the assignment of project coordinator. And let's understand that that's not project leadership. A coordinator is a person who assists the project manager at entering data into their scheduling software, at drafting status meeting uh, minutes. And on large projects, this is a real benefit. Usually that's where you see them. They're describing the wake from the rear of the boat. They're telling us where we've been. When I say project leadership, I'm talking about a project manager who's out in front steering this project moving it in the direction that it needs to go. Now I also hear excuses from project managers and one of their favorites is this project was delayed due to circumstances beyond my control. And it seems like if it's out of their control then how could they possibly uh, steer the project around it? There are people who've been certified by the Project Management Institute they have the highest certification available called the PMP. They know what to do and they don't do it. And we hear from them very often, well, that's really kind of academic and theoretical and I have to work in the real world. We all work in the real world, so it can't be an excuse. We know that some people are promoted to project management after pretty good performance in the technology field. And there's an assumption that they will automatically be good project managers. We'll wait for four years to get an engineer out of school. But we want them to be a project manager overnight. So promotions are often based on technical proficiency. So how would organizations solve this problem? There are a few key steps that they can take, uh, Scott, and this is what we help organizations do. Number one, create an experience-based 
career path. There are clients uh, that we have that are fairly large global companies, and one of them has a, a four-level career path for project management. There's a training level position, a project manager position, a senior project manager position, and then at the top, a program manager position. The program manager is a manager of project managers inside a company program. It's important to get the credentials needed for each one of these jobs. Uh, in this example that I'm using, the trainee position is the only one that does not require the PMP credential. It's required for the project manager, senior project manager, and program manager level. Recently, the Project Management Institute created a credential for program managers. So now it's possible to be certified externally by the largest uh, project management association in the world for both project management and program management. Earlier, I talked about people having a technical background. When people are in formal education and focus on technology, they don't often have the opportunity in their program to learn people skills. So internally in companies, part of the development of project managers must include human behavioral skills development. Promotions need to be based on history and on merit. For example, a person shouldn't be given a large project to manage until they've proven to the organization that they can manage a small or uh, a medium-sized project. The next recommendation I have isn't the easiest to implement, and that is require the best project managers to teach. Your best project managers want to be out actively running their projects, but a piece of their time needs to be developing good project managers from within. I believe in this so strongly that I started a company to do this. In Cadence, the people who do the training are project managers with at least 15 years experience. Let me give you the case of one of my clients. It's an international client in Asia, and in their largest division, there are 30,000 people creating software applications for use around the world. There are about 300 project managers, and once a month, there's a three-hour meeting for all the project managers. After that meeting, there is a follow-on meeting of about 25 people. And that's when the most senior project managers meet with the most junior project managers for an hour to share with them tips and techniques and give them to advice on challenges that they're running into. It was really heartwarming to me, a professional in the field, to see this happening in that company. And the final point that I'd like to make is, is really appropriate as an ending for this series. I want to remind all project managers that they've got to talk, act, and live 100% buy-in as they execute their projects. They need to be visibly and energetically committed to the project objective. I'm also talking about persistence, that par very powerful word in our language and a word which translates well to other languages. And that is, if you run into an obstacle, you've got to look for a way to get over it, under it, around it, or through it. If you fall down, you get up. You keep moving forward. If you fall down again, you get up again and you always focus on keeping that project moving forward. Never, ever, ever give up. This concludes The Eight Biggest Problems from Cadence Management Corporation. For more information on this series or on Cadence Management Corporation training and support for your projects, visit Cadence on the web at www.cadencemc.com. All the tools mentioned in this series are available to download for free. This and all Cadence podcasts are available for free in the iTunes Store. Download iTunes today at www.apple.com/itunes. 
Thank you, and we wish you all the greatest project success.